Hello and welcome to the Financial Bunny TV. My name is Nicolette Mashil and of course I am your Financial Bunny. And yes, I am back to help you secure your financial future. And today I bring you somebody that I really, 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 really adore, but also look up to, right? His name is Jimmy Muyaha. He's the founder of Laboa Capital and Lotus Academy, host of SAFM Market Update. And really he has done quite a number of incredible things. So if you don't know about him, please go and check him out on social media. He is there. In fact, Google him. Okay, I believe in Googling. Google him so you can know all about the work that Jimmy does. Absolutely fantastic in trying to break down the financial world where business means personal finance and really just try and fuse it so all of us can actually understand what is going on. Jimmy, welcome to Financial Bunny TV. Thank you, Nicolette. Thank you. Oh, for it's me. so great to have you here, guys. You must understand I've been, <laughs> been stalking this man for a long time. <laughs> and then when I did a stint with MoneyWeb and Heart 1027, I finally met him and I was like, yes, this is my chance. This is when God is pushing it. But Jimmy, we're going to kick off the show. We're going to talk a little bit about the two-point retirement system. I know that a number of people have been trying to understand what does it mean to me. I think when I did the video, it was information giving, trying to explain what the whole concept is. But now to today i want to talk about what would it mean to you what do you need to do come the first of september 2024 but before we get into all of that we're going to test jimmy's financial literacy yes 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 we're going to play save or spend so jimmy the same way you played 30 seconds okay. you're going to pick a card okay you're going to describe what's on the card and i'm going to try and figure out what it is that you are describing this should be fun should be do fun. i read the other side of the card so just the other side with the four uh words okay. are you ready right. i'm gonna give you a test run where i'm not gonna time you so go this is king <laughs> Martin <Luther. laughs> what? no in the financial world <laughs> Did you just say, are you testing my financial yes. literacy because i'm like what is that <laughs> something is king cash there you go mm -hmm. um what i talk about every day Market. Uh, the company that we currently have, Laboa Capital, is an asset management firm. Okay. What do these firms do in investing? Sorry, I think I may have used the word. <laughs> the word. Yeah. They invest. It's a bit, it's a bit <laughs> weird. Um, okay. Let's, we'll come back to that one. Okay. What is the top 40 known as? An index. Yes. Yes. There we go. <laughs> Yay! So, that was good. It was. So it was, it was asset allocation, oh, which is difficult to, to yes, explain. Yes, 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 um, yes. But the other market, cash and index funds. Ah, yes, did well. Okay, yes. so I'm going to go. I'm going to go yellow because that's general. I'm okay. going to try and make this as easy as possible oh, for myself. they're coded as well. <laughs> yes, they are. Okay, are you ready? Yes, let's go. Okay, needs and? Once. What do you do when you do your taxes online? It's called? Uh, E-filing. Okay. Uh, 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 Electronic Lissetra? submission. Yeah, no, it's fine. E-filing oh, okay. is perfect. Lisetja uh, Khanyaho is there. Saab, uh, governor of the Reserve Bank. Just the first words. Governor. Okay. Now, before Lisetja Khanyaho, there was a white lady who was also the governor. What was her name? Uh, uh, Jill Marcus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That was so good. <laughs> that was really Lots good. of 30 years, was, 30 I seconds experience. I love that. <laughs> very, very much impressed with Jimmy's financial literacy. I didn't think he put mine also to the test there. I was like, hmm, what are you talking about? <laughs> but as I said, we are going to be talking a little bit about the two-part retirement system. And I think we'll start off the conversation with what was the point of it? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I suppose the point of it depends on whose perspective you're looking at it from. Okay. So for... What we've been told is that the point of the two-part retirement system is to afford people more flexibility, mm -hmm. give them uh, greater flexibility to deal with the challenges of everyday life um, by affording them access to their retirement before they retire. Okay. So by introducing a savings pot, we then say there's a portion of the money you can access before you retire because life happens and you might need, you know, emergency mm. funds or you might need to tap into emergency reserves. I mean, mm. COVID was a, a very big turning point in our society, in our understanding of what we do with our finances, with our lives, and all, all those sorts of things. Um, but I suppose it was just, yeah, in an effort to provide more access to resources for individuals mm. so they can better support themselves. Um, that's what it was intended to be. But one could also argue at the same time that this is a political stunt. 
Yeah. Why do it now? Why election, in an election yeah. year? Mm. Why try and rush it to be approved before the May um, voting date of the 29th? Mm. So th- there's a lot of different perspectives you can, I mean, we, we'll look at it from all the perspectives that we can. Mm. Um, and of course, there is a lot of political influence where it comes to this, simply because of the... Uh, government employees pension fund the PIC there is a large portion of South Africans that have their um, finances sitting with sorry that have their finances sitting with the government mm. and the government is responsible for managing those pensions mm-hmm. so we'll look at it from various angles there but mm. in essentially it was aimed at or well, hopefully aimed at helping people aimed at helping people now I, I attended a pensions conference I think last year or two years ago in Zambia and one of the biggest things that were coming out were young people saying but why are you not allowing us to lend against our pension in South Africa mm-hmm. we've got things called pension back lending which is more your home loans mm. right a lot of the government institutions love mm. to do that mm. Why can't I use my pension as an asset that is 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 going to help if I want to buy a car, if I want to buy, you know, I don't know houses, but like, why can't we extend that? I think that's that's down to a lot of things, right? So legislation might be a part of it. Mm-hmm. Two might be the type of debt that you want. Mm-hmm. It does not make sense for us to have you use a long term um, pension fund to mm-hmm. finance a credit card that you should be, you know, maintaining and Mm. and that sort of thing. So uh, the types of credits that we have might not necessarily line up with uh, what the pension fund could be used to Mm. back. Mm. Um, But also, if you think about the nature of a pension fund, it is a long-term thing that you're investing essentially on a monthly basis for 20, 30, 40, even 50 years in some cases Mm. um, to then retire with something. And the whole purpose behind... Well, at least the, the drive from a government perspective is that when you retire, your pension should be enough to look after mm-hmm. you so that the state does not have to look after you. Mm-hmm. And the more you're using those funds, the more you're putting them at risk, the less likely you are because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, mm-hmm. regardless of how good of a payer you are. Mm-hmm. You don't know what tomorrow holds. And the the whole point of it is to preserve this so that when you retire, you have something to retire with. Mm-hmm. Now, to the point on using it for certain types of uh, credit. I mean, if you think about a home loan, mm. uh, the banks also view a home loan as a long-term yeah, thing. So yes. then for them, it lines up to say, that makes sense. It's a long-term liability. You're committed for 30 years. Mm. It's not a, it's not the latest VW mm. GTI that's going to be a five-year lease or a three-year lease. Mm. It's a long-term commitment, mm. much like the pensions. Mm. So I think there's a couple of things that are at play around using pension funds for other things. Yeah. And we must also remember that the PIC, in the case of government pensions, then takes those pension funds and invests them in an effort to grow that value. So if you are then taking funds and saying, I need to put these funds as surety for one, two, three, four, five, depending on who you're sh- who's granting you that sure. loan, mm. you might not be able to touch that money. And yeah. if someone like your your asset manager needs to do a portfolio reallocation or readjustment or whatever, they might find that difficult. So mm. if you think about a pension fund, they're typically invested in 60% pen, um, bonds and 40% equities. Mm. If Say, for example, Nicolette has a pension fund, 100,000 rand, 60,000 is invested in bonds, 40,000 in equities, and you suddenly take out a loan against that, Mm. and the market goes through what we went through in COVID, and equities completely are out of favor. Your pension allocator, your asset allocator, the the guys that manage your pension fund, Mm. sit there and say, okay, we need to do a portfolio adjustment. I need to be out of this equity or this exposure and I need to be into this other market or whatever. Mm -hmm. That is limited because with the surety that's placed there, I might have to exit a position at a loss because I'm exiting early or I'm I'm forced to exit at a time I didn't plan to. Mm. So that might result in fluctuations in the Mm. amount and that's going to affect how much is set as surety. Mm-hmm. In a home loan, it's a very different thing because mm-hmm. it's a long term. I can yeah. recover those. Markets are cyclical. We can we can get into the ebbs and flows of ups and downs of markets. Mm. But if I need to make a long term decision on a portfolio that I know is going to mature in 20 years, mm. I don't need that being jeopardized by I, a five short minute short term mm. decision like mm. do I have a 10,000 rand credit limit mm. or not. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. All right. So the government has now, res- re- they've, 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 they've kind of concluded to this two point retirement system that comes into effect on the 1st of September 2024. 
what exactly should an ordinary South African who has some form of retirement fund, sh what should they be doing? So the lovely thing about this is um, South Africans don't actually have to do anything. Um, you have a couple of options at your disposal. Okay. Let's start with what happens come September 1st, 2024. Mm -hmm. uh, you have every every contribution up to the 31st of October, 2024. August. August, sorry. Yes, Everything August. up to August 2024 mm -hmm. will be placed into what is known as your vested pot. Okay. All right? Okay. All your contributions, your, your monthly deductions that go off, go into this pot. That pot is ring-fenced. It's placed to one side. Mm -hmm. We'll come back to this pot. Okay. Let's, okay. Leave, it Let's leave it there for two seconds. On the 1st, your contributions that go off from the 1st going forward mm -hmm. are now going to be split in two ways. 33% is going to go into what's known as a savings pot mm -hmm. and 66% is going to know, go into sort of a new um, annuity pot, which will be similar to this vested pot, mm -hmm. which will buy you an annuity product. So, so when you say buy you an annuity, you mean buy you like an income in retirement? Yes. So, that, okay. so now we let's look at it from that perspective, yes. right? Let's jump to retirement quickly. We'll come back here. Let's jump to 55. At 55, um, when you retire, you are allowed to access a certain portion of the vested pot and all pots or your, your entire retirement pot. Yes. But the law states that you have to purchase a retirement product. product. So whether yes. it is a living annuity, whether it's a retirement annuity, you have to purchase a product that will pay you out and look after you on a monthly basis. So that the government doesn't. Right. And those <laughs> yes. products sit with asset managers, okay. such as Sunlam, Old Mutual, Laboa Capital, yes. those sorts of things. Yes. So where the uh, what you do at retirement is you sit down with your financial advisor, hey, I'm 55, I'm retiring. Your financial advisor says, right, this, this is what your retirement looks like. Let's assess your risk. How much risk do you want to take? How yes. do you want to do this? And they then tell you, this is the product you want to then purchase. It'll give you 3% or it'll, it'll, you'll draw down at 4% a oh. year, it will grow at this rate or whatever it is, and that's how you purchase that product okay. at 55. Okay. Now, in your life leading up to that, you are then saving up to purchase that product. Okay. That's where... And that's the 66%. That's it. Okay. That's the 66%. So okay. now, come the 1st of September, when they do that split, if you are still working and you haven't reached the age of retirement yet, yes. your contributions from then going forward will automatically be split in that manner. In the okay. past, it was always just in one pot. That's yes, it. That's yes, the end of it. Yes. Now, the reason for the split is the government has legislated that you will now be able to access the savings pot this so the pot 33%. the 33% 33% okay but of now the of of the contrib of the new of this new system right yes. now let's quickly bring in the vested pot for a second here yes of that vested pot on the 1st of september you are allowed to take 30000 rand of that vested pot everything you've saved up to the 1st of september you're allowed to take 30000 rand of that and put this into your savings pot as your seed fund of the savings pot or as your initial contribution of the savings pot it's a once off amount you can never do it again and that's the limit okay hold on hold on cuz that gets people a little confused yes. right you saying 30000 so let's say my pot my 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 retirement up until the 31st of August, all equal to only 40,000. Yes. Am I allowed to withdraw 30,000 from it? Mm -hmm. Or am I allowed to, is it the, because then there's the whole 10%. Mm. So is it 10% of the 40,000 or will it be 30,000 as a lump sum? So it is 10% of your entire amount saved okay. capped at 30,000. Okay. So it may not exceed 30,000. So essentially it's not you withdrawing 30,000 from the forty. It's 10% of it. 10% As long as it doesn't 30, go above 30,000. Yes. In the case where, yes. in the case, as you said, where the savings is only about 40,000 yes. or whatever, there is legislation that says if you retire and the cumulative value that you have, I believe the threshold was 251,000 or 250,000 or less. Yes. If you have accumulated less than that, you're entitled to the entire, entire amount. amount yes. Now, why that comes in is because let's assume a different amount. Let's yes. assume you've hit 4 million yes. at retirement. Yes. There is a different piece of legislation that says your first 550,000, 500. yes. uh, it was 500, it was bumped up to 550. Yes. That first 550 is tax-free. Tax okay. So for the government, it's the same as allowing them to let you take the 40,000 in its uh, entirety. So okay. more okay. often than not, we're dealing with pension benefits that exceed 
the 250,000 threshold. Okay. And so therefore, that's why I used the 30,000 yes. and not the 10%, yes. because it's always going to be capped at, at 30,000, yes. no matter what it is. Okay, so for all you newbies who are new to employment, who might not have even more than 100,000, or let's even bring it down to 50,000 rand, remember it's 10% mm. and not 30,000 rand. The 30,000 mm. is capped if you have more than that, mm. and your 10% exceeds the 30,000. Yes, if your 10% equates to more. Perfect, absolutely. perfect, perfect, perfect. perfect. So... Okay. So now we've got this ability to start this new savings pot. Yes, it's, which it's, you can It's like a from. boost. Yeah, it's like a booster to start off that pot. Uh -huh. Now, the, the withdrawal terms as we understand them is that you'll be able to withdraw only once a year okay. from that savings pot. Mm -hmm. And secondly, any withdrawals you make from there are taxable. That is the big caveat. Mm. Taxable. Mm. So if you think about your contributions, let's say you, you put in the first 30,000, mm. you're contributing, you're contributing, and by the time you get to retirement age or whatever, you've got 100,000 in that mm. savings pot. Mm. That entire 100,000 is taxable, subject to, obviously, the overriding uh, legislation around the 550,000 um, deduction or the 550,000 tax exemption. So how the 550,000 tax exemption works is that it is a lifetime allowance. Yes. It is a lifetime exemption, which means oh. if Nicolette has 4 million rand yes. accumulated, yes. but throughout so Nicolette's you know, been journey, withdrawing. you've been, you changed jobs, so yes. you withdrew, withdrew, you did this, so you, uh -huh. the, the tax man says they can perform what's known as a tax calculation uh -huh. to determine how much of that 550 you have left tax-free? Well, sirs. The moment you've exceeded that 550, it doesn't matter how your product is structured. It doesn't matter what happens. Anything you withdraw they is subject tax to tax. You. But now your savings pot doesn't wait for that. It's subject to tax from day every one. Da every time. Every, every time year, you withdraw. <laughs> every annual withdrawal, it is subject to tax. <sighs> So let, me, <laughs> let me let me let, let me let me take this and, and I want to add this as well um, because I had the, a similar question as well um, in terms of contributions mm. you cannot top up the one without topping up the, the other. other because they split them they split them so yes. if you then have a contribution that's three thousand rand a month a thousand rand goes to the savings the two thousand goes to the sixty six percent yeah if you then decide to double up that payment and make it six thousand you cannot decide that the, three, new, three. the, the second yeah. three yes. goes only into savings. It will still be split. split in accordance with that. This is why they didn't they didn't do any increases to tax this year <laughs> because they knew they were going to catch us up to with this retirement system. It's it's such a and so this is what we understand about the re retirement system up to now. Yes, there's still other legislation around divorce law and mm. all of that that brings mm. in new caveats mm. that we're still trying to unpack. Mm. So the government uh, we we've we, we've got a workshop that's taking place from National Treasury later around the I think it's the 19th of April if I'm mm -hmm, not mistaken, mm -hmm. that will then provide clarity on some of the questions that still exist in the market. Mm -hmm. And there are still some questions from a financial perspective around whether or not this is practical to implement. Mm -hmm. Because come the first, if everybody phones their retire their uh, portfolio managers, their financial, mm -hmm. uh, or the, yes, they're mm -hmm. their administrators of their pension funds and says, we want to do this. Do we have the capacity yeah. to be moving around so billions yeah. at once? So that is still coming up. The you almost need to say to everybody, you need to make a decision between the 1st of August and the 31st. You know what I mean? Because it becomes a little... Because it's not automatic. That's it. So now, even from that perspective, sure. we are still waiting on certain things to be ironed out from a legislative perspective. Yeah. Whether it's from the FSCA's perspective around institutions that manage these funds mm. and how they deal with that. Mm. Uh, whether it's from the different legislate, uh, legislations that might conflict with mm. the pension fund. There's mm. still a lot that needs to mm. be, and we're running out of time. We are. Time is not on our side. I want to park something and I want to mm. come back to it. The divorce, you just mentioned, you mm. know, divorce laws. We had mm. a whole big issue come out on social media with a financial institution. Don't need to mention names. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why that entire thing happened was because of a divorce decree, right? Mm. And I want to just park it if you are comfortable for us to just go into it. Because I think there's a financial education piece that needs to be discussed there mm. that did not come out strongly on social media. Mm. But let's come back to two-point retirement system, right? Right. So now 
so here's what people are asking. People are saying, okay, I've got this part that you spoke about that we put away. Yes. Which is where all of my retirement that I'm currently right now over the years that I've accumulated is now right. sitting. And they're calling it the vested part, right. right? Now, when I decide, let's say 1st of October comes mm -hmm. and I decide to resign. Yes. Do I still have access to it? Absolutely. And I can still withdraw? Absolutely. So, so if you, again, 1st of October or 1st of September comes and you decide to resign, mm. we're assuming you're over 55. Yes. Yeah. Not even before 55. Before 55, it becomes a complicated thing. I'm changing thing. jobs. It becomes a complicated thing. So okay. if you think about the legislation now, if you change jobs, yes. you, you have the option to move to another your, fund. Exactly, to yes. another fund. Uh -huh. That option still remains. It still persists. Okay. Um, you can then leave the... Th there's the option to even purchase a... Or put the vested pot... Into a preservation. Into a preservation and, uh -huh. and provident fund. Because the preservation fund gives you a bit more flexibility yes. than the traditional pre- and post- or retirement fund that we know. Yes. Um, now... If you do choose to do that, mm. that you'd have to consult a financial advisor on in terms of the merits and the disadvantages around why you would do that. But what it essentially does mean is that regardless of your age, come the 1st of September, the changes take place. Your vested pot is still viewed as a vested pot. It's still there. But it's managed by the old retirement It's managed regime. by the... But so it's it's it's... It's set in the old retirement regime. regime. It's yes. locked. It's ring fenced to say it's there as an amount. Yes. It's done. You are not going to contribute towards it. But can I withdraw from it? Yes. Ha! But. That is dangerous. But <laughs> withdrawing from it for what? So are you withdrawing from it to seed into the new no. savings pot? Or are you withdrawing from it under the conditions of... Of the previous yes. retirement so system. So under the conditions of the previous retirement regime, yes. I'm swapping jobs and you know what? Yes. I have debt to pay mm -hmm. and I want to settle that debt and mm -hmm. I want to start off the new two-pot two pot system on a Fresh. thin slate. You will not be able to empty out the entire pot. Okay. So okay. that pot will then... So what they do is they effectively freeze it. Okay. They put a, a, a freeze or a lock on it and they say, you're still subject to accessing... Because remember in the past, you were allowed to access one-third. Yes, of it. You're still only allowed to access one-third one of it. They'll carry the two-thirds over. So let's say okay. on the first... Let's say on the first of... September. Yes. You are 35 years old. You have 3 million rand in that pot. Yes. You will be allowed to still access the 1 million subject to the conditions of the previous system. And my seeding will come from the 1 million. Right. Okay. Okay. But even that capped at the 30,000. Yes, yes, yes. Then you then have that other 2 million that you couldn't access. Yes. That has to purchase a product at 55. That remains the same. So it will get transferred it will into frozen. my retirement it fund. It will be frozen carried until you're 55 Five. and that's it when you hit 55 okay this new two pot system has a savings pot and a retirement thing yeah. and a, a retirement pot your vested retirement pot alongside this retirement sure. pot together will then purchase that product for you i won't lie jimmy i'm just thinking about somebody who had a provident fund before mm -hmm. um they kind of Blanket, blanketed all retirement funds mm -hmm. who then had this a new retirement fund mm -hmm. and then now has to go into two bond. It just feels a little confusing because you almost have three different types of mm. retirements now that are under three different types of regimes. Yeah, so... But I think if we if we if you think about it if you think about them individually you'll be yes. able to understand them, yes. right? So your vested pot... You can't touch. Can't Leave touch. it as is, can't touch. If yes. you touch it, remember you're risking that lifetime allowance. Yes. Right. Yes. Leave it as is until you hit 55 yes. or take, put it in a provident fund or whatever. until. But don't assume you will be able to access 100% of it. Yes, because absolutely. It because per, it's still under the it's same. It's still under, you're right. Yes. So the redemption does not change Yes. Now that the two pot system, system is has changed, yes. the, the redemption still is at retirement. Yes. Right? Yes. Or yes. other conditions that may prevail. Yes. Um, the the changes happen towards the contributions. Okay. And that's why they're introducing the savings pot. Because if you do want to withdraw from somewhere, you must withdraw from the savings pot. That's portion. where you must withdraw from. And they've got a minimum, right? There's a minimum there, of 2,000. There is a minimum of 2,000, but the. 
again, the amount that's going to be in there, and if you think about the minimum of 2,000, you don't necessarily want to be withdraw. If you only get one withdrawal. You don't want to do it immediately. Think about think about, yeah. think about about an e-wallet where yeah. the first withdrawal is free and then they charge you thereafter. Yes, yes. If they do this and you do a, a, an annual withdrawal, yes. mind you, hey, it's not yes. a monthly withdrawal. Yes. It's once you, a year. Once a year. And think about the use of that carefully. Think yes. about whether or not you really need to withdraw from that. So if ah. you if you contribute a thousand rand a month, let's say you seed it with thirty thousand, yes. the cap. Yes. And then you contribute a thousand rand a month. Yes. At the end of the first year of this new system, 42. one September mm. twenty twenty five, it's forty two thousand mm. rand. You can mm. withdraw the entire forty two thousand rand. Mm. It will be taxed. And use. <laughs> I love That's how you. What you must remember. Don't forget. It will be taxed. It will be taxed. <laughs> so don't forget that part. Right. Okay. So now, when when you choose to access the savings component, it's so important to access it for the right reasons. Yes. Don't access it because you need a 13th check because you want a bonus. And don't access it because you're going to pay tax and SARS is looking to raise 15 billion. <laughs> Absolutely. And they are ready to raise 15 billion. And they probably will. <laughs> because the minister was too excited about, oh, you guys get all of your money in the 1st of September. And I was like, oh, minister, don't do this to us okay so let's talk about somebody who's 55 yes what decisions do they need to make because i mean at 55 you can now retire right yes the decisions you need to make are which retirement product do you purchase okay that's you your financial advisor sitting down understanding which product and mm. understanding why you want to purchase that product. Mm. So there's a rule of thumb around not um, however you however um, whatever amount you then receive on a monthly basis needs to be equivalent to 4% or less of the entire value of the portfolio so that the portfolio lasts you a certain okay. amount of years, right? Mm. There's a calculation that goes into that. Mm -hmm. But the decision you're making there at 55 is what product are you purchasing? Okay. Because you also need to take into account the fact that retirement funds now, the government is exploring the possibility of using that for different purposes. And we'll get Sorry, to that. Sorry, wait, what, what? Um, <laughs> there's hold up, been, hold up, hold up, hold up. There's an old piece of legislation that was done away with in the late 80s pre-democracy Okay. that uh, the government, or the current uh, ruling party is looking to revisit around using, leg uh, using pension funds to finance infrastructure development projects. That has a different set of ramifications. So we want to build a bridge between Joburg and Pretoria. We don't have the money. So government is saying we should be able to dip into pension funds of government employees to build this bridge. Not just government employees. Not um, just government employees. Yes. So if the legislation goes through, depending on how it goes through, uh, we could be faced with a situation where fund managers, asset managers have a mandate to, to purchase or to invest in certain infrastructure projects um, to enhance and improve those infrastructure projects. The aim of that is, of course, to bolster the state of the economy and all of that. Not mandates. <laughs> <laughs> you know what mandate always like, makes me uncomfortable. Right. Now, so, it might be a very open mandate to, to not restrict uh, companies and asset allocators on which types of projects they invest in. Mm -hmm. It's all still very much up in the air, mm. so no need to panic just yet. Let's wrap up the 55-year-old. Five yes. At 55, you've never touched anything. Mm. You've been diligent. You've contributed for 30-odd years or whatever it is. You find yourself at 55. You're purchasing that product. Okay. The other conversation you're having is, do I take the 550,000 Rand lifetime allowance mm -hmm. that once off? Mm. Um, mm. And again, from that, it's not that you can only take 550,000. Remember, from your vested pot, you're entitled to a full third. So if your third equates to that, let's let's use a three million rand example again. If your third equates to one million rand, mm. the first 550 is tax exempt. Ah, yes. The 450 that follows is subject to tax and you can withdraw the full million. But this is if you're choosing to retire at 55. Right. Let's assume you say, I don't want to retire at 55. Okay. So I'm now part of the two-part retirement system. Okay. Right. Do, do you need to opt in? You have no option to opt out. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. So... <laughs> It's uh, unfortunately what it means is that even even if your vested pot sits here, yes. from the first, 
all of your contributions, as long as you're still contributing towards retirement, will be, split. will be split. You have no option to not have them split. Okay. Then at 55, you sit down with your vested pot, your savings pot, your new pot. Sure. And you then say, I have, across these three pots, I have 6 million rand. Mm. Of my 6 million, 66% of it needs to purchase... Like a, an annuity. Right. The 33 that's sitting in the savings, savings pot that would have been... the And the, not even the vested, just let's take the savings pot okay. for, uh, on its own. Yes. Whatever that reaches up to that point, if you haven't withdrawn that... At all. At all. Yes. You are able to withdraw it, but you are then still subject to, to tax. Tax. But on this vested side, the one third on this mm -hmm. side is under the rule of the 550,000. The savings pot is under the same rule. Okay. So, 6 million rand at retirement. Yes. You haven't touched a single cent of it. Yes. Of the 6 million, let's say 3 million was sitting in this pot yes. and 3 million is sitting, sitting in this pot. new pot. Yes. In this new pot, you will have, in your savings, you'll only have 1 million yes. because it'll be a third split. Yes. In pot three, the new annuity, you yes. will have two million. Yes. On this side, you will have a vested pot with three million. Yes. Which means you will have um, access to a third of this pot. Yes, as cash. As cash at, yes. at one million. Yes. The savings pot at another million. Yes. That gives you two million. Yes. Of that two million, only, only 500 550. is tax exempt. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. So That's what I was trying to so the, so the main thing is the chances are your your vested pot is going to push you well above uh, the, the threshold. thresholds mm. across the board. Mm. So when you then retire, you're purchasing the retirement product. Mm. Now, what's interesting is with the vested pot and the new pot system, you can elect if you happen to change jobs. Okay. This is a unique thing. You can elect to leave your vested pot with its previous provider. Or if your employer changes providers, oh, this, yes. you can leave the vested pot there. Yeah. And when you start the new pot, if you happen to be starting it with a new employer or the employer starts with a new asset manager, yes. you might have an entirely new system or entirely new asset manager yes. that manages the new, new pot. pot. So at retirement, you might find that you're dealing with two, two different, different um, conversations here. Mm. And that's a unique advantage. A lot mm. of people might think that that's confusing, but it's a mm. unique advantage because, again, let's take the 6 million rand. It's a simple example, mm. right? Mm. You bring through the 2 million from the vested and you've got 2 million from this new saved pot. Mm. This two million, you can apply a slightly riskier strategy with ah. this asset manager. Whereas this one, you can be more, more conservative. conservative. Ah. Now, the question then that a lot of people have been asking is, at 55, if I've got the ability to take that 550,000 tax-free, should I do it? Yes or no? Is that not on a needs basis? <laughs> it's on a needs basis. Yeah. I'm of the view that every individual should explore it yes, absolutely. for the reasons of one the the fact that you get it in its entirety yeah. means you can put that money to good use, use. Mm. but that's what you must do don't withdraw the money and not, not put it what you're to do. good use yeah, if you absolutely. don't know what you're going to do with it sit mm. down with your advisor before mm. you make the decision mm. but if you sit there and you are exploring the idea of starting trucks. a business or buying buy trucks right. <laughs> I hope my aunt is watching <laughs> buying trucks she doesn't even have a car herself why is she buying trucks <laughs> Oh, I guys. haven't. So this is the thing. I think with with business opportunities, if you have a good opportunity, that could be a good time to Go explore for it. it. Yeah, absolutely. But again, know what you're doing. Don't absolutely. take the money and then go on a spending spree because then you've wasted a good opportunity. So I know a lady who bought franchises, and then COVID happened to her. Franchise got closed, and then she started racking up debt. And she had so much debt that the mall actually took over her franchise. Mm. My heart broke for that woman. But Jimmy, before I let you go, there was a social media storm around a financial institution that did not pay out, was delaying payments. Um, I guess everybody knows we don't need to mention names. But what came about afterwards was the fact that it was the divorce decree that did not get to the financial institution. And obviously that changes how retirement funds are then distributed. If you could just maybe take us into confidence of what actually, in your opinion, happened there. So I think there's there's a lot 
um, that we need to understand first before we understand that particular case. Mm -hmm. Each case is going to be different, different. depending on mm. the variables, right? So understanding the structure of the, that marriage and that relationship. Absolutely. Understanding the contractual obligations mm. in community of property, anti-nuptial agreements. Mm. I know that we, we have this thing where we believe that a prenup is a bad idea. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't know. I don't get it either. I was like... And, and if you understand what it means, an anti-nuptial agreement with and without accrual, yes. that can be the difference between where your retirement pot is split across yes. debts you may not have incurred yes. and where your retirement pot is not part of this joint estate. Absolutely. So depending on how these things unfold from a divorce perspective, now I'm not a divorce expert, Absolutely. not a divorce attorney, mm. you'd have to look at the agreements that were in place in it, within the marriage, yes. the uh, time frames of which these agreements were entered into, but also understanding that there may be personal agreements yes. between Me the parties yes. when they were married, married. Yes. and those need to be taken into account. So it becomes very difficult to sit there and say, oh, I'm entitled to this or oh, you yes. owe me this much without understanding the intricacies. I'll yes. use I'll use a different example okay. from the one that we know. I'll use yes. a more recent example. Um, the South African Reserve Bank is currently sitting with frozen mm. funds mm -hmm. from a certain individual mm -hmm. who received these funds mm -hmm. from a company linked to another individual who has since passed. Yes. Who is under investigation. Fun. <laughs> fun. Always what fun. What a typical South African example. Always fun. <laughs> now, the, the, the argument is that these could be the potential benefits or proceeds of From fraud criminal and activity. criminal activity yes. and those sorts of things. Yes. And you are not, they're not allowed to access the funds, yeah. right? So the courts on this basis granted the Reserve Bank a preservation order mm. to preserve those, those funds. funds. Mm. These two individuals were never married. These two individuals, it is speculation that one was the ex-girlfriend or the ex-mistress of the other. Mm. There is no legal no. agreement Union there. Between and the you two. can mm. see that the, there is an extent to which the courts feel that those funds need to be preserved until the investigation is concluded. Yeah. So the point I'm making here is to say that understanding what is unfolding is important to understand the implications it may have yeah. on lockups that are placed on your estate. Yes, yes. All right. I mean, with that in mind, uh, you're not married? Not yet. Not yet. Um, community of property, mm. which one do you lean towards and why? I lean towards the anti-nuptial contract. It has nothing to do with whether with or, or not. With or without accrual. Um, that I'm still kind of deciding on. So it has nothing to do with whether or not you love your partner or not. Of course not. Yeah. Um, for someone like myself who has started a number of businesses, mm. being married in community of property means my spouse is at risk of any failures that I go through. We Absolutely. are considered one single joint estate mm. from that perspective. Mm. If I'm going to be entrepreneurial and there's going to be um, businesses that incur debts, you mentioned the, the, the friend of yours who had the franchises yeah. that then had to give up those franchises. Mm. If there are debts in that respect mm. that then come back to a person in their personal capacity, Mm. They come back to the entire estate. estate yeah. They come back to your partner. Mm. So from a business perspective, it is smarter to separate those mm. and have those secure. You can have assets in, in, in a business context. You can grow assets in a marital and family context. Mm. Now, with or without accrual depends entirely on how you do it. Essentially, mm. the only difference there is from the date of, marry, of marriage, Whatever. everything mm. afterwards is then accrued yeah. by both of you yeah. as a joint unit mm. or accrued in your individual capacities. That comes down to preference. Does that accrual? Cruel also take an account date. Or yes. Is it a cruel just a, so if, it's it's a cruel so it of assets and liabilities. It's a cruel of everything. Where, what that, did we? So it is we 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 arrived at this marriage yes. with our own assets and whatever decisions we make after after that with together. a cruel we are considered together. 
okay, my future partner, there's no accrual. We're not playing these <laughs> games. <laughs> But also just think that if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you better marry a nine to five so you can balance it out. Right? <laughs> you're going to balance it out for the kids because, you know, if I lose everything, at least my partner still has these, something. These are considerations you have to think about. You Absolutely. have to look at. Um, and again, this has nothing to do with whether or not you love your partner. Mm. It is entirely about understanding the reasons behind that. Another thing to look at is in the event that your partner passes away, mm. what then happens to the estates? Absolutely. If your partner had debts, they had a credit card that was in their name and you're married in community of property, mm. Mm. that debt and those liabilities are, for, are, for, are part of one singular mm. estate, which means you might be held liable for those debts. And there's nothing worse than paying, a, a, what's that thing, Ch maintenance for your partner's children that pop up after marriage and now they come to you because joint estate, Moss, now they want you to pay you for maintenance. Interesting developments. <laughs> <laughs> Always interesting. But Jimmy, you're absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much for joining us on the Financial Bunny TV. We're hoping to have you once again to come and help us really just simplify some of these financial terms, financial laws, reforms, processes, and all sorts of things. Because at the end of the day, I think a majority of us really would like to secure our financial future. And we can only do that by knowing today the right decisions to make so that tomorrow they give us the financial reality we are working towards. Now, before I go, please please do remember that none of what we say on this channel constitutes as financial advice. If you are looking for financial advice, please speak to somebody who's certified and registered with the FSCA. And if you want to get in contact with Leboa Capital, we will leave the details right here on your screen right now. But until then, I'll see you guys on the next one.